just say amen. Give us some hearts and likes. Like I said, God is a God of times and seasons. He is a God of marking the day. And I want you to mark this day in the spirit today or tonight, this morning, wherever you're watching from. I believe this is a prophetic day, a profound day. And this is a moment of time where the spirit of God is beginning to mark you in the mighty name of Jesus. So August 22, very quickly, of course, August is the eighth month and eight stands for new beginnings. And 22 typically stands for Isaiah 22, 22, which are the keys of David. So today on August 22, I prophesy new beginnings and the keys of David to be released over you, that the spirit of the Lord will begin to open up doors that no man can shut and God will close doors that no man can open. Someone say amen. So I believe there's a new beginning. There's new doors. There's double doors. There's keys of David being released over you today on August 22. Amen. And even if you're watching on 823-23, I love that because it's double 23. So we release double Psalm 23 over your life. Praise God. Well, here we are in 822. <clears throat> There's uh, about two main things I want to share. And then I want to pray with you. Amen. There's about two main things I want to share right now. But of course, I posted about a prophetic dream that I had uh, less than one week ago. I mean, I don't believe it because so much has happened in the last five days. Amen. But... uh but literally on August 17th, it was the Independence Day of Indonesia. And we had a 12-hour event in Jakarta, Indonesia. My good friend, Prophet Joel Abraham. And we had a 12-hour event from morning to evening, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. And uh, in the morning session, I began to talk about the dragon falling over Indonesia. And in fact, tomorrow, 23-23, we're going to be posting that on Facebook. It's already posted on our YouTube. But I saw a dragon in the spirit. And then I released the word that the dragon has falling down, which is the accuser of the brethren, as we can see in the book of Revelation. So I saw the dragon over Indonesia, the Leviathan spirit, falling and being destroyed over the nation of Indonesia. Now, of course, the dragon likes to live or exist in waters. They also like to live and exist in the air. Okay, so I began to prophesy over Indonesia that something was in the air. Something was in the air. Well, guess what? After we ministered, after I released that prophetic word, literally one hour later, there was a 5.7 earthquake in Indonesia on Independence Day. Some would say, amen, signs that make you wonder. But why am I sharing this? Because just on that day, as I woke up in the morning, I had a prophetic dream. And uh, you know me, I'm a young man, so I don't have too many dreams. But there's times where I do dream, or I, I will have series of dreams. And I know these are prophetic dreams where God is speaking. In fact, I know when God, in fact, tonight, God's probably going to meet me in a dream. Because when I talk about it, then it begins to happen. Amen. So, um, so I woke up that day from a dream and I woke up from the dream and there was a spiritual father figure, uh, that I know in Indonesia and he's a great man of God. It's a great divine connection, how we met, but I met him many years ago, maybe seven, eight years ago in Indonesia and his family is beautiful. His family's very dear to me, but, um, in the dream, in the dream, the spiritual father figure was there in the dream and gathered around him was in a circle about seven, eight of us. And I was one of them in the group of seven or eight. And in the group of seven, eight people, as I was one uh, joined in the group, the spiritual father figure begins to pass out checks, okay? Begins to pass out checks. This person begins to pass out checks and all of a sudden, he faces the person that's standing right in front of him. It's not me, okay? Faces the person who's right in front of him, and he rebukes him very harshly. <clears throat> rebukes him very harshly. And I don't remember the content of 
what was said in English vernacular, but I knew that it was a rebuke, all right? Uh, and again, today in our millennial age, we get so offended that we think correction is, a, is uh, you know, we take offense at correction. We think rebuke is an attack. It's not an attack, it's love, beloved. Amen, please do not sow to that false orphanage in Nigeria, child of God, beloved. But um, you see, in the dream, the spiritual father figure rebuked the person right in front of them and rebuked them harshly. And to all of us, it felt very stern, felt very harsh. But who here knows the Bible says that a true father will discipline, chastise those that he loves. And if a father does not chastise discipline, then of course you are an orphan child or a bastardized son. So this is biblical. So as the spiritual father passed out checks to everybody, but the person in front of the spiritual father, he rebuked him, boom, I woke up from the dream. As I woke up from the dream, I sensed in my spirit that there was financial provision coming, that God was releasing checks in the mail. Now, if you need financial breakthrough, I want to say amen and give us some hearts and likes. Okay, now there are financial angels. There are wealth angels. There's all kinds of angels, okay? Uh, and again, one of my antithesis or thesis or you know, arguments of financial angels, number one, you see in scripture that there's angels at the time of harvest. Now, harvest can be fish, it can be people's souls, or it also can be wheat. And of course, it's not just wheat, but wheat is a symbol of of meaning finances and financial wealth. So there's many different types of angels. And <clears throat> I believe right now we're in a season where God is releasing financial harvest, where God is releasing sudden leads and sudden checks in the mail. Okay, listen, I'm not prophet lying. I'm only sharing the word, the vision, the dream that I was given. And I believe tonight on 822, the Lord wants to encourage you and stir up your faith on this evening, wherever you're watching from this broadcast, that on new beginnings and, and the keys of David, that the spirit of the Lord is releasing checks, financial breakthrough, financial provision over your life. But just like in the dream, what happened? The spiritual father rebuked one person. So I believe there's some people that are gonna get rebuked. I believe there's some people that God is going to rebuke openly and it may feel humiliating. It may feel embarrassing, but who here knows it leads us to repentance. All right. It leads us to uh, sorrow because godly sorrow leads us to repentance. So I believe right now we're in a season where God is beginning to reward and honor some of his saints, some of his children, but there's also going to be some people where he's going to bring down. The hand of God will bring low. The mighty hand of God will raise you up, but as well, he will bring low the proud. So I believe we're in an open window right now to repent, to get our hearts ready, to be aligned with heaven, because Father God is passing out checks. Father God is passing out blessings. Father God is imparting mantles, gifts, spiritual inheritances, even in the next month as we are speeding up, accelerating to Rosh Hashanah 5784. The spirit of the Lord is accelerating things and he's getting our hearts, our houses, and our lives in order because he's about to release financial harvest. So this is a little bit of a play of words or again, whenever you talk about the things that are prophetic or even dreamology, whenever you talk about the realm of dreams, all right? There's always many meanings, okay? Yes, there's the absolute meaning, but because it's the realm of the prophetic or it's spirit, like one does not equal one. One could equal one million, right? Because in the realm of the spirit, you never get one-to-one. -one. You always get one to multiplication, to exponential, uh, exponential quantum results. Are you learning yet? Are you receiving yet? Amen. Let me just take a drink of this bubbly. Hallelujah. 
<laughs> but you see, in the dream, as a spiritual father rebuked this person, it can mean a number of things. I believe, number one, God is about to expose a Judas in your life. God is about to expose the Judas. And something I've learned walking with the Lord for the last 15 years is every season there is a Judas and there is a Jezebel. Now, what does that mean? Judas is somebody who betrays you. Jezebel is somebody who manipulates you to destroy you. So every season there is a Judas and a Jezebel. However, in every season, we have the opportunity to become more like Jesus. Can I get an amen? So I believe God is beginning to expose the Judases. He is exposing the Judas in the camp. And not only that, but I also believe God is saying, beware of who's in your inner circle. Because you see, we were all gathered around in a circle. We were gathered around in a circle. <clears throat> Good to see you, Conrad. And we were all gathered around in a circle. And the spiritual father rebuked one person. Everybody else received blessing, honor, favor, and reward. But only one person was rebuked. So I believe God is saying, watch your inner circle. Cleanse your inner circle. Watch who's on the inside with you. Because there is a shaking and an exposure within your inner circle. Someone say amen. amen. Now here's another thing. Not everybody who's with you and around you will receive what God has. Because God lavishly, graciously, generously is always pouring out himself, always pouring out his gifts. But the ones that are humble, pure, and ready will fully receive. But there will be some who will adamantly reject, deny, and not receive the fullness of God. I pray that you will not be one of those people. But get ready for checks, for blessings, for God to release his outpouring, his oil, his favor, his anointing over your life. This is the day that the Lord has made. And all of God's people say amen. Now, here's another thing. <clears throat> I believe what this means, excuse me. What this also means is God is saying he loves 90% of our lives. But still one thing I have against you. Good to see you, Dr. Jen Malin. God bless. There's still one thing I have against you. Isn't that what God said to the church in Ephesus? Revelation chapter 4. I know your deeds. I know how you call out the wicked deeds of the false apostles, the occultic group called the Nicolaitans. But there's one thing I have against you. You have lost your first love. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. You see, I believe right now God is awakening first love. And God may love and appreciate 90% of our lives, but there's still 10% that we need to get right with God. Now, can we get real right now? Because things are about to get real. In the next month, everything oh, in your life is about to change. I feel the Holy Ghost. In the next month. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, yes, Lord. In the next month, <clears throat> everything in your life is going to change. Everything. Because we're about to step into the new Hebrew year. We're about to step into the new Hebrew year, Rosh Hashanah, the head of the year, 5784. My goodness. Come on, I want you to pray in the Holy Ghost right now. I feel the fire of God. I pray that you will make it. I pray that you will cross over. I pray that every Judas, every Achan, where there was sin of Achan in the camp, will be exposed. Masa Terebasa. Rebese, and I prophesied today on August 22nd, even as you are connecting with the man of God, with the spirit of the Lord, I prophesy now that there's a new beginning and new doors are opening up and God is closing the old doors in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. Many, many to kill a parson. The writing. <laughs> Uh, oh man, 
<laughs> I don't know if I could ever do these late broadcasts again. Because these people are getting me drunk in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> but I have released the fire of God. <laughs> the fire of the Holy Ghost. Come on, someone shout, fire! fire! Hallelujah. So today on 822, I released that word of blessing. But also it's a word of warning. Will you take heed? Because we're one month away from Rosh Hashanah. Where you will be the head and no longer the tail. Will you be the big head or will you be the big tail? And I believe God is reversing some things. He's shifting some things. He's overturning some things. And he's bringing us into a time of consecration. To seek his face to get ready. Amen. I'm telling you, it's like, even though I had five days of rest in Bali, it wasn't enough. I need more rest. I need more time of prayer. I need more consecration, more separation. Not because... I'm in sin or there's evil that I'm doing, but just because I want more of God. I want to go deeper with Jesus. I just want to go away with the Lord in the chambers of the King. And it's in that secret place where mysteries are revealed. And even as I prophesied and declared yesterday, we are in a one month window of miracles and mysteries revealed. In the next month, miracles are going to take place. And mysteries are going to be revealed and unveiled over your life in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, say amen. So listen, I believe there's a prophetic sign. Get ready for checks. Get ready for the father of lights, your good and perfect father from heaven above. Every good and perfect gift is from heaven. Get ready for the father to begin to bless you, to reward you, to honor you. I prophesy financial provisions coming. The heavens are opening up. And even in the next month, God is about to invade with harvest, with the reaping of fruits, with the reaping of glory, as we are getting prepared for the last month and the big bang and the hurrah into 5784. Now, we are already in the Hebrew month of Elul. I'm going to be talking more about that next week for the prophetic word of the month for September. But we are already in the Hebrew month of Elul, Loridei Loridai Anilei, which is the acronym E-L-U-L. -L. I am my beloved's and he is mine. The king is in the field. You are not just going to get leftovers and you're not only going to get sheaves. You're not only going to get bundles, but you're going to get your bow axe. This is the month where you will cling to your bow axe. You will cling to the kinsman redeemer and you will have access, say access. You will have access to the king who's in the field. So I prophesy fields of harvest, fields of glory, fields of revival in Jesus name. And next week, I'm going to talk more about the prophetic word for Elul and for September. Amen. But I want to talk about this thing here and then I want to begin to pray for you amen if you are receiving right now I want to say hallelujah if you're receiving right now say amen give us some hearts and likes share this on your wall because I feel so much faith and you know me I don't want to lie I'm not a prophet liar we want to speak the word of the Lord and I believe that dream that I released is already encouraging so many people I'm I mean, think about it on Instagram. Who here knows who David Harris Jr. is? Are you kidding me? The guy, I mean, he's like, he's like Benny Johnson. You know, he's like uh, Officer Tatum, Candace Owens. But David Harris Jr. likes my stuff on Instagram. He follows me. And uh, he gave my post a like. So praise God for that. Amen. But listen, I want to go over to Proverbs 8.22. This is is the word that I have for you today. Praise God. Proverbs 8.22. And today, as I'm ministering live to you, it is August 22nd. Praise God. Help me to break through to 200 tonight. Amen. Here the Bible says, The Lord brought me forth. The Lord brought me forth as the first of his works. Before his deeds 
of old. I want to read that again. Proverbs 8.22. The Lord brought me forth as the first of his works before his deeds of old. Amen. Someone say preach, Dr. Ben. Now, now listen, Proverbs 8 is an unusual parable or it is an unusual allegory. Because if you read Proverbs 8, it's almost like a poem where the spirit of wisdom, of course, which is Jesus, because the Bible says in the book of Corinthians, Jesus is the spirit of wisdom and the power of God. Jesus is the wisdom and the power of God's Father, Jehovah, Adonai, Yahweh. So Jesus is the wisdom and the power. He's wisdom for the Greeks and he's power for the Jews. And if you begin to read Corinthians, you see Apostle Paul's, uh, Apostle Paul's argument because the Greeks were always looking for logic and reasoning. Look at Aristotle, look at the philosophers, uh, look at Plato, look at, uh, you know, look at uh, Donatello and Raphael and Michelangelo and all the Ninja Turtles. And so here, Apostle Paul is sharing with the Jews that Jesus is the wisdom of God. And then he begins to confront the Jews and because the Jews are always looking for a sign. They're always looking for miracle signs and wonders. That's why Jesus said, you look for a sign, but the only sign I will give you is the whale or the fish of Jonah, right? So the Jews are always looking for a sign. Oh, if you are, what's the sign? I will tear down the temple in three days and on the third day, it will be rebuilt again. So they're always looking for a sign. They're always looking for miracles, okay? Now that's one of the shame. That's one of the, the shameful things is that as Christianity moved from Jerusalem to Rome, okay, as Christianity moved from the Acts Church into Constantine Christianity, we have lost a lot of the Judeo foundations of the supernatural and of the power and the miraculous realm of God. But who here knows there's a comeback, amen? We're going back to the Acts Day Church, and we're going to see the power, the supernatural power of Jesus like never before. Amen. But anyways, I'm digressing a little bit here. But Proverbs 8, this is an allegorical parable where the spirit of wisdom is beginning to talk back to us. And the spirit of wisdom is saying, the Lord brought me forth as the first of his works before his deeds of old. If you continue to read Proverbs 8, you see where uh, and, and let me just begin to read off a little bit. Proverbs 8. Praise God. Uh, I, I, loved, I love this. I love Proverbs. I used to live in Psalms and Proverbs for many years. But here, uh, Proverbs 8.15. By me, kings reign and rulers decree what is just. By me, princes rule and nobles all who govern justly. I love those who seek me. So wisdom is... Speaking allegorically, I love those who seek me and who love me, who diligently find me. Riches and honors are with me, enduring wealth and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, even fine gold, and my yield better than choice silver. Amen. And the list goes on. But again, Proverbs 8, are you with me today? Proverbs 8, 22. The Lord possessed me at the beginning of his work. The first of his acts of old, or in other translations, as I pinned here, the Lord brought me forth as the first of his works. Listen, here's the word of the day. Here's the word of the day. There is an increase of the spirit of wisdom that God is releasing over your life right now. Because it's a season of building, it's a season of seeking, it's a season of increase. So as we are going from glory to glory, God is saying, I want to release wisdom over you as the first of the works. Now, don't try to do anything without the word of the Lord. Don't try to do anything without the word of God. Now, the word of the Lord is wisdom. But who here knows that there is a spirit of wisdom and a spirit of revelation, spirit of understanding, spirit of counsel, might, uh, knowledge, the fear of the Lord, and the spirit of the sovereign Lord. As you see in Psalm uh, uh, as you see in Isaiah 11, verse 2, excuse me. But these are all manifestations or characteristics 
or colors of the Holy Spirit. Proverbs 8.22 once again. Today on August 22nd, on 8.22, I release Proverbs 8.22 over your life. The Lord is bringing you out, bringing out wisdom as the first of his works, before his deeds of old. Someone say wisdom. I believe today, God is in riches, wealth, honor, the ability to govern, to rule. All of these blessings are here before you. But those who love wisdom, they will endure forever. They will be kept from harm. They will be kept from self-righteousness. Those who love wisdom, the spirit of the fear of the Lord, will guide you, protect you, cover you, and hover over your life. Someone say amen. Amen. The Lord brought me forth as the first of his works before his deeds of old. I want you to say wisdom. Yes, now, Apostle James says in the book of James, does any one of you lack wisdom? If he, she who lacks wisdom, ask, because your heavenly father loves to give to those who are asking for wisdom. There's something about wisdom, my friends. Now, that word in Hebrew, wisdom, it actually means weapon. I've talked about this many times, but wisdom means skill or the ability to yield, wield a sword. So wisdom is actually a weapon. Wisdom is offensive, not defensive. Wisdom always advances and never retreats. Wisdom is constantly moving forward and is alive. Foolishness is death. Foolishness is sin. But wisdom is like a weapon. God wants to increase the weapons of mass destruction called wisdom. Because the devil wants to lure you in with the schemes of the enemy, deceive you, pull you in, every conniving trick and trade of the day. But we say the devil is exposed. There is a restraining order on the enemy. And today we declare the wisdom of God, which protects, which guides, which covers, which promotes, which blesses me. Today on August 22nd, 8-22, there is a release of wisdom over your life and across the earth. If you receive it, I want you to say amen. amen. Now I'm going to begin to pray for you. But I feel today such a prophetic unction on August 22nd for Proverbs 8.22. But as well, I'm talking about the wealth of the nations. Because again, August 8, New Beginnings 22, the keys of David open doors. And I believe right now in this transition season, in this season of transition, who here feels like your whole life is up in the air right now? If that's you, I want you to wave your hand or give me some hearts and likes. Who here feels like your whole life is literally hanging in a balance right now? And of course, I released that word about one month ago where multitudes and multitudes are before the Lord in the valley of decision. And I prophesied that the Lord is releasing a decision-making anointing where confusion and chaos and Jezebel's manipulation is breaking off and where you will be strengthened and secure to make the right decisions. Hi, Angie. Bless you, honey. Now, I believe right now in the next month, everything is about to change for you. Some of you, you're going to change your residential location. Some of you, you're going to change your business or your job. Some of you, you're going to change levels or positions, meaning you're, you will be promoted. Some of you, you're going to increase uh, in certain relationships, but there's great change and transition coming. And I believe my friends, God bless you, Mary Lee, Shalom to you. And I believe my friends in the next month, we really need to pray against the alert, the warnings that the Lord showed me, which I released yesterday. I really believe these guys are trying to speed up, amp up the next lockdown, all right? And the next jab, the next variant in the next month. So isn't it interesting? The world gets darker, but the glory shines brighter. 
The world goes through more shaking, but that shaking is to release you and uproot you so that you will ascend and fly higher in another realm. I believe today, God is saying, get ready because in the next month, everything is going to change. So Lord, I thank you right now. I pray over every single person who's connected with the spirit of God in this broadcast right now. I prophesy that the fire of God will fall. And I prophesy, listen, right now I saw prayers being answered. I saw in the spirit, God is answering prayers. And I believe some of you, you have been praying fervently for certain issues, for certain things. Well, I prophesy justice is coming. God is releasing justice over your life. We're going to see justice in the United States of America. We're going to see justice in the church, the globalist elitists, these demonic one world agenda Satanists are doing all that they can to destroy planet earth. But if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways. And if they seek my face, then I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. The Bible also says the eyes of the Lord search to and fro but he found no one. He found no one. I pray that his eyes will find you, that God will see you. I pray that God will see you strong, that there will be one standing like Abraham, even if there's five, even if there's 10, even if there's 50, Sodom and Gomorrah would not have been judged. But God is looking for those Debras. He's looking for those Gideons those Samsons, those judges in the land to stand up in every region, every street corner, every vario, every neighborhood. God is looking for men and women of God to stand in the gap and say, not today, Satan. This place is covered by the blood of the land. In Jesus' name, if you're with me today, I want you to say amen. amen. I want you to begin to pray in the Holy Ghost right now. I want to pray in the Holy Spirit right now. Shandarabata. Hallelujah. Shakarebese. Shakarebe rabasa. Rebesita rababa rosa. Kiraba shakarababa. Lord, I thank you that every word. It will not return void. It will not fall to the ground. But every word will surely come to pass. Masa karabrata. Keep praying in the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord, for upgrades and for promotions. Listen, I saw in the realm of the Spirit, I saw your head breaking the eggshell. Like, you know, when little chicks are born, little chicks, uh, of course, chicks are the baby chickens. If you don't know what chicks are, okay? <laughs> but these little chicks, they poke their head <laughs> or even turtles. How about that? Turtles. Turtles poke their head and they break the eggshell. And so I just saw a breakthrough coming to you where, where many of you felt like you've been stuck under this ceiling. You felt like you were stuck under this layer of oppression. Jesus. Jesus. I declare God is arresting every spirit that tried to slander you, destroy you, bind you, and hold you down and back. In Jesus' mighty name. Get ready for breakthrough. Are you ready to break through? Are you ready to break through? You're going to break through. You will live and not die. You will live and not die. Son of man, son of man. What do your eyes see? I see a valley. 
valley of bones. Prophesy to the winds. Prophesy the breath of God. And slowly I began to suddenly see an army rise up in Jesus' mighty name. An army is rising. A new breed is rising. The comeback anointing. The take back anointing is coming in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, I want you to pray in the spirit right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Rebe sete. Rebe sete. Thank you, Lord. I prophesy right now that in the next four weeks, you will see and find your financial favor. Get ready to go from zero to hero. From red to black. From under to over. Supernatural increase, favor, and blessing. Promotion. It is your portion. Jesus. Keep praying to the Holy Ghost. Even in the dream as a spiritual father. Rebuked one person out of the group of eight. There's going to be a sudden falling or a sudden fallout. But the Lord says it's because I'm cleaning house. I'm cleaning house. Let every Judas and Jezebel be exposed. And Father, if there's any any wicked thing in me pull it out Lord deal with it if there's any wicked way in me may I not be blind to it may I not be blind to my own evil or to my own wickedness God I ask you open our eyes so that we may see and humble ourselves before you oh God I'm not going to miss my blessing. I don't want just a 90%. I want it all. I want everything. I want the fullness. I don't just want one part, one portion. I don't want 50%. I don't want it. I want it all. And I believe right now the Spirit of God is getting His church ready. He's getting us ready. Today on 822, or even as you're watching 823.23, I prophesy. A double portion of Psalm 23. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where he will anoint your head with oil. He will set up a table for you to feast before your enemies. Jesus. Jesus. Listen, I see the glory realm coming over you. <clears throat> and many of you, even tonight as you sleep, you're going to get caught up in the spirit realm. Shut up. And you're going to get caught up in a dream. Jesus. In the next month, everything is going to change. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Listen, I want to pray for some people here. I want to pray for some people personally here. <clears throat> Look at that. It is a sauna up in there. <laughs> I want to pray for some people in the name of Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> if you want me to pray for you, I want you, you to come and pray for me. But listen, before I begin to minister to you personally, <clears throat> I want to make some announcements. The first announcement, of course, next Monday, I am doing my next Zoom webinar. It's for free, but you do have to register. <clears throat> my next Zoom webinar, hallelujah, it's called Effective Spiritual Warfare. Some of us continue to feel like a victim, like a little rag doll 
tossed to and fro like we are on a sinking boat. But you're meant to be effective in your spiritual warfare. Now, there's a lot of people who think it's all done, it's all finished, and it is finished. Jesus finished it on the cross. But a lot of us think that we have cheap grace or false grace, and we could just not pray, not fast. We don't need to have any spiritual disciplines. But it is a spiritual battle, friends. And people are falling and are falling susceptible uh, to the ways of the enemy. So on this live Zoom webinar, Effective Spiritual Warfare, I just pinned it here. But on the live Zoom webinar, I'm going to teach you how to be effective in your spiritual warfare. How to gain breakthrough and how to increase and really how to be the powerful warrior that God has called and anointed you to be. Amen. So if you're going to join that online live Zoom, I want to say I'm joining. It's free. And uh, as well, next week, I'm going to be in Pennsylvania. So if you're in the East Coast, I saw you, Angie, earlier. If you're in the East Coast, come. Come and be with me. Come and be with us, guys. I'm going to be in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Um, it's right next to Hershey. That's where Hershey's chocolate came from. Even though it's more sugar and chemicals than real cacao. Uh, but I will be in Lebanon, Pennsylvania for four days of glory. So come and see me if you're in the East Coast. Uh, it may be the last time I'm in the East Coast by the end of the year. So... Come and see me, my friends. As well, listen, you really need to join this. All right. Now, one thing about me, I am a signs and wonders, times and seasons prophet. Okay. I'm all about signs and wonders and I'm all about times and seasons. The oil of Issachar. All right. The tribe of Issachar. And that's why even today on 822, I'm releasing this prophetic word on his prophetic dateline. But 5784, the Hebrew year is coming up. And so is Rosh Hashanah. And that means the head of the year or the new year. Now I am doing a live Zoom webinar where I'm going to release the prophetic word for 5784. And as you and I join hundreds of people from around the world, for this live Zoom event, this webinar, we're going to go deep in getting ready to cross over into Rosh Hashanah, the new Hebrew year. I don't know about you, but I don't want to stay back in Egypt. I want to leave with seven bags of plunder. Someone say Lue. Someone say Hermes. Someone say Versace. All the Italian and French words. Amen. You're going to leave with seven bags of plunder. Amen. It ain't no Jan Sport and it ain't no Herschel. It is some wonderful, glorious leather from the Lamb of God. From sheepskin wool. Amen. So get ready for that. Listen, you need to join us. All right. You need to join us. Prophecy. Rosh Hashanah 5784. And you can sign up, register online at our website. If you're going to be there for that, I want you to comment, I'm joining. And right after this, I'm going to begin to pray for a number of you folk. Praise God. Praise God. But listen, I believe that God is releasing checks over to his people. I believe the Lord is releasing checks provision these angels of provision are being released over your life amen if you receive that say amen. amen lord i thank you right now lift up your hands god i thank you every single person who's connected to this prophetic anointing i declare breakthrough is now and that you are destroying every cap of depletion and limitation of finances right now where the locust called Bidenomics has been eating away at your finances the Lord rebuke you 
and we declare recompense and payback in the name of Jesus. I, I say right now, all my money in Ukraine, come back to me right now. All my money that is in the nose of Hunter Biden, come back right now in Jesus' name. It's coming back. All my money that's been stolen and taken, sent to Ukraine. We declare it's coming back. Hallelujah. It's coming back. <laughs> we just release angels right now. Amen. <laughs> Someone say amen. Now, I want to pray for some of you. Hey, Jalen Mahone. Jalen Mahone. Ah, Shaka. From Cheyenne, Wyoming. Glory to God. It's my first time seeing you, I believe. But what I see over you, I see and I see the glory of God shining on you, Jay, Jalen. And I even feel like your name, I'm, I'm sure you know what your name means. I don't, I could Google it now. But I feel like Jalen is a biblical prophetic name. But I see light shining on you. But I hear the Lord saying, he's going to continue to open the heavens. Because even now you feel like you're stuck. Like what I see is you feel like you're in a pit. And as you're down below in a pit, you could see a little streak of light. But the Lord's going to open up the heavens and his glory is just going to cover you and surround you. Get ready to sing again. Get ready to sing a new song to the Lord. Amen. I see songs of deliverance all over you, even all over your family. Do you have a daughter, Jalen Mahone? If you can just comment and respond. But I believe this is a daughter that I'm seeing. But there is a double portion blessing over this young lady here in the name of Jesus. So Lord, I thank you for Jalen Mahone that she will sing again. You will sing of the goodness of God once again in the land of the living. Jalen Mahone, I want you to just comment and respond and then I will go to the next person, amen. But yeah, if you want me to pray for you, I want you to comment, pray for me. And I'm going to choose a handful of you. Good to see you, Margaret K. MK. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love. Listen, I just saw in the realm of the spirit. There's some people right now. Literally, it's like you have no money for food. You're literally starving. And maybe you're watching from another country right now, but I, I feel like there's some people here. Yes, Jalen has three daughters. She posted earlier. Wow. Yeah, I even just saw the horse. I don't know if you... Uh, Jalen, do you ride horses or do one of your daughters ride horses? Because I just saw a white horse in the spirit. But what I saw right now is I saw like people starving. And maybe you're watching from another country or even in the United States. But like literally there's no, she said, I love horses. There's no money for food. I pray right now God will provide. And that the Lord will fill your stomach with communion, with manna. They even complained and said, we have no meat. God gave them quail. God, we don't have water. God gave them water. If you ask for bread, will he give you stone? If you ask for fish, will he give you a snake? So Lord, bless and touch your people. I feel something. I just saw like Bahamas in the spirit. Not because I want to go, man. But I just saw the Bahamas and the Caribbean. I feel like we need to pray against the hurricane we need to pray against a hurricane for the bahamas and the caribbean i believe in the next two three weeks we need to raise up a wall of prayer and pray against the hurricanes in jesus name thank you lord 
Revera baba ba se tarabasha. Lozada Marari. That's a new name for me too. Lozada Marari. Oh, from Phoenix, I see. Married to Jose JG. And listen, all I'm doing is I'm just hovering over your little face so I could see your face a little bit bigger. Or your image, right? Lozada Marari. Yeah, I just see such a gift of hospitality. You're a giver. You're a family woman. You, you have healing hands. You have hands of hospitality. And Jesus said, whatever you do for the least of these, you've done to me. When you've clothed the naked, when you've fed the poor, the hungry, you visited those in prison. Whatever you've done for them, you've done for me. You have a mercy gift. Lozada, do you have a rabbit? Lozada Marari, I just keep seeing like a rabbit. Did you ever have a pet rabbit or your family has a fascination of rabbits or something? But I just feel like this rabbit, it stands for the purity of your heart. Stands for how pure your heart is. Let me know if that makes sense. She said, yes. How are you guys seeing all this? Thank you, Lord. Yes, I did before. I love it. You had a rabbit before, right? Was it white or, or grayish? Thank you, Lord. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. I love it. Y'all are very engaged right now. Thank you, Lord. That's not a rabbit, but the Holy Spirit. Yeah, buddy, but I saw a literal rabbit, and she said she had a rabbit. Shata Rabata. Thank you, Lord. All right, well, let me go next year. Thank you, Father. All right, Monique and Paul. Monique and Paul. Wow, thank you, Lord. I'm, try I'm trying to pin you here, but there's too many coming. Monique and Paul. Uh, it says Monique and Paul. Are you married, Monique and Paul? Is, is that why you, you put Monique and Paul? But anyways, I just heard the Lord say restoration's coming. Uh, family restoration's coming. And I see you kneeling at your bedside crying out. Yes, you are married. I see you kneeling on your bedside crying out. But there's going to be a deep restoration in your family. And even in your marriage. And I believe... Monique and Paul, there's, there's going to be a revival in your family. Like I literally see you guys having Bible studies, revival Bible studies in your home. And like your home is going to be a home church. Like your home is going to be a place where you house and host the presence, the glory of God. So, and even Monique and Paul, I, I believe I just saw your mother, but I believe... The Lord wants to touch her mother. Now, is she sick? Or maybe there's some ailment or something? I believe God's going to touch her mother, my friend. Ha! Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Joan Banda, where are you from, sister? Joan Banda. He knees. Her knees. Good to see a South Africa family. Tyler, good to see you, my friend. Winston, good to see you. Where do I know Brother Winston from? 
from Zambia. All right, Joan Banda, I want to pray for you, sister. Um, I instantly saw favor and promotion over you. And you carry the spirit of Proverbs 31. You carry the grace of a Proverbs 31 woman. Uh, and literally, I see your spirit so pure and shining bright. And uh, I saw like the Lord promoting you into like a manager position. Now, now what I saw, Joanne ben ben Banda, I saw you like, like, you know, I travel a lot, so I go to a lot of hotels. But I saw you working like at a hotel and hospitality, like a hotelier. And then you getting promoted to a manager position. Does that make sense to you? I want you to just comment if that makes sense to you. But there is a promotion coming. And the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise. Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Winston Kern, Kern now. Bless you, sir. That face and name's familiar. Jacksonville in the house. Thank you, Lord. Are y'all enjoying this? Yes. This is a prophetic day. You never know when I'm going to take time to prophesy over God's people. Thank you, Lord. Thanks, Vic Strike, for being a subscriber. You know what? Some of you, please consider becoming a subscriber on Facebook. I think in the next week, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a private prayer and prophecy time with all my Facebook subscribers. So uh, subscribing is like you become a partner. So uh, that's going to be fun. Bless you, Joanne Banda. Thanks, Yvette Galloway. All right. Barbara Rhodes. Let, let me pray for you, Barbara Rhodes. Barbara Rhodes. Amen. Set a double here. Thank you, Father. Barbara Rhodes. I don't know where your f face went. Oh, here you are. Yeah, Barbara, I see... Uh, I see a great gift of children, great gift for children. And I saw Africa over you. I don't know if you've ever been to Africa or you want to go, you probably do want to go to Africa, but, but I saw Africa, I saw children, I saw orphanages. Like the Lord calls you a modern day Mother Teresa. And, uh, yeah. Wow. Saving traffic children, rescuing traffic children. That's your mandate. And like there's such an innocence and purity in your heart that the enemy detests it. Like the enemy hates it. Thank you, Lord. She said, my daughter wants to go to Africa. Thank you. Well, you guys got to go on a family trip. Where are you from, Barbara? Because I really feel like you need to come to my Pennsylvania meetings next week. Thank you, Lord. 
Lift up your hands. God, I thank you today. Bless your people. Are the fillers there or are you all asleep now? <laughs> Lord, bless your people. I command every single person who has an infirmity, sickness, disease, ailment in their body, fire, be healed right now. Be healed in the name of Jesus. From the top of your head to the sole of your feet. 100% right now. In the name of Jesus. Didalam lama yesu. Samoa sakit kan, cuci kan, didalam nama Tuhan Yesus. Hallelujah. Are you ready to receive the spirit of wisdom? Yes. You're ready to receive yes. the blessing of the Lord. Amen. 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 If you receive today, I want to say amen. amen. Glory, to God. Glory to God. Now listen, friends, before we close today, tonight, I want to give you the opportunity to bless the Lord and to sow. I really feel... Again, I don't take up, I don't, I don't do corporate sewing all the time, but I really feel like this is important today for us to sow and to bless the Lord and to respond. Amen. So can we just, uh, let's get the link through here. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Glory to God. If you want to sow, I've pinned the link to bless the Lord through our ministry on top here. And just obey God. Obey Jesus. Every seed will go a long way. And uh, like I said, if you become a Facebook subscriber, in the next week, I'll, I will do a private prayer and prophecy time with all of our Facebook subscribers. So be on the lookout for that. Amen. Good to see you, Rob. You're here. Robin Thick. Glory to God. As you sow, listen to the Lord, obey him. Bless his name, bless his servants. Believe in his prophets, you will prosper. Amen. And do consider giving this page a like and a follow. Share on your wall. Thanks, Angie. I hope to see you next week. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bless your prophet David. I thought that was you, Armstrong. I'm glad your arm's not weak. Oh yeah, listen up friends. We also have another exciting event. It's not out yet, but Sunday, September 10th, we have Pastor Suzanne Hen. Mama Sue, Mama Suzanne Hen is going to be here with us at Open Heaven's World, Sunday, September 10th. You don't want to miss that. Not only is she the wife of Pastor Benny Hen, but she is a glory carrier intercessor, a general of the spirit. And her father, uh, Roy Hardern, once upon a time had the biggest church, one of the biggest churches in America. And her father started Charisma Magazine, Charisma Publishing, and her father was best friends with Youngie Cho from Korea, best friends with Smith Wigglesworth, Lester Summerall, Derek Prince. So that is gonna be Sunday, September 10th. So y'all need to come in, drive in, 
fly in, crawl in, swim in. Amen. You need to come and be with us. Tara Elisha. Amen. Awesome. Well, I'm half Korean, born in Seoul. That's awesome, Sandy. I'm full Korean. And uh, most people don't believe me because I look like I'm from the south side of West Korea. I know. She is a general. She is a general. September 10th, yes, that's correct. Amen. Bless you, Cece. You look Japanese. Well, that's better than looking ugly. Well, thank you. I take that as a compliment. Even though the Japanese people murdered a lot of my people. But we still love the Japanese. And one day, I would love to go to Japan and release the glory of God there. You know, that... uh those Dragon Ball Z's and Godzilla needs to get bound in the name of Jesus. You look like Jesus. Oh, thanks, Violetta. Uh, bless you, Prophetess Ivana. <laughs> bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, my soul. When will I come to Hilo? Honestly, I don't know. Um... I wanted to come in December, but it looks like I may not. I might just stay in Oahu because my time is short. But let's see. Otherwise, I'll, I'll definitely be back in Hilo, Lord willing, next year, like March time. Because I am bringing Dr. Roberts Lerden to Hawaii next year. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. God's giving you a sense of humor. You have to. When you're dealing with Karens and trolls of all kinds, you have to. When you come into South Africa, Lord willing, October, I will be in South Africa. Bam, I can't wait for that. Vicky, bless you. Hello there, Abundance from Malaysia. Are you still doing? Yes, I am. I'm going to be in Israel, then I'll go to Egypt, then I'll go down to South Africa. <laughs> It's going to be awesome. Come back to Grand Junction. I'll be back in Grand Junction in October. October. And I'm bringing a friend this time. So it's going to be very exciting. Thank you, Marilyn. Bless you. Yes, absolutely. The Lord sits and laughs. The Lord is the God of LOL. The Lord out loud. Can't wait to you to teach on the Holy Spirit. I have many times, my friend. But yes, as the Lord leads. Prophet Luis, good to see ya. Man, did your wife explode a baby yet? I'm sure her time is coming soon. Yes, and I will be in, hey guys, I'm going to be in Arizona as well. Next week, September, uh, next month, September. Next month, September, I'll be in Arizona. My husband, Charles, graduated from Spirit Life, Roberts Laird, an awesome. Dr. Roberts is a great friend of ours. He doesn't know, apparently he doesn't know whether to call me apostle or prophet or whatever. <laughs> the tan looks good on you, thank you. It's really just me sweating. Because I am... Thank you, Jesus. God bless you, H-Town. Shalom to you. Only when you come to ATL, when there's an open door, my friend, honestly, that is one place I want to break open in Jesus' name. But there has not been a good open door to have me host me in Atlanta. Hi there, Talofa, Lofa, Sen. Joe Berg in the house. When am I coming to Guatemala? When there's an open door. You know, mal in uh, Spanish means bad, doesn't it? So we should call Guatemala, 
Guata Buena. I've been praying for you to come down here since I moved down. That's awesome. Well, you keep praying. <laughs> yep. Pretty much my whole schedule is booked this year, but Lord willing, next year. Fred, I'm excited for 2024. Amen. I'm excited. It's going to be such an incredible year. And uh, I believe Trump's coming back. Well, all right, my friends, I love you. Have a great night or morning or day. I hope you were blessed by this. Shalom, shalom. I'll see you soon.